Hello, I'm Ben from Cyrilite, uh, hosting here at SCAN. Uh, I'm here from a company, company called Cyrilite to talk about some of the products we distribute um, and work with very closely. A lot of them are mainly lighting and some grip products. Uh, the ones we have here primarily are Kinaflow. So you can see this lamp behind me here is a Kinaflow Celeb. Uh, and, and that's all the way from LA, uh, from sort of an actual gaffer who started producing these. And I'll go into that more. Um, soon, but and then also other products we have are from Munich and a company called, called Dado Light, and uh, they focus mainly on hard sources, controllable sources, and soft sources. And we also have what's lighting me here is a Photoflex Starlight, also from Los Angeles, and they started out as a stills manufacturer making stills strobes, and also make some continuous lights. And I also have another uh, company where we all use, which we use their stands for. And it's called Matthew's Grip, and it's all around. But we'll kind of, I'm sure Matt is on CCAM or BCAM, CCAM, uh, who will be sort of showing uh, some of the products in detail. But I'll go into a, a little bit of detail about Kinaflow firstly. Um, so Kinaflow was started by a, a gentleman named uh, Frieda Hockheim, uh, who was a, was, still is a gaffer, um, and developed a re revolutionary lighting system using fluorescent tubes. And the main issue that he'd had to deal with was, was flicker and the second issue which became even more important was colour and obviously when you you know if anyone's actually tried to film in an office or in a supermarket you'll notice that at certain frame rates you'll get horrible flicker um, and also you'll get horrible colour namely green and that's mainly to do what's in the tubes um, which is mercury which burns green um, so what Frieda did was mix some phosphors made the tubes made some electronics to stop the tube stop flickering and could then actually build them into sets and a, th a famous film which had Mickey Rourke in it called Barfly was one of the first ones they did this on and a gentleman came over saw the products thought these are really great products how do you you know can I rent them off of you and he went yeah sure and then from there they started making you know making them and renting them and selling them and then it made Kinaflow the company it is today which is a very very large company world round world renowned they have academy awards um, and renowned in the industry and you're used on every feature film you can imagine. Um, so a great product and it's great to be able to represent them. The other uh, company we represent is, is uh, as I mentioned before, is Dado, Dado Light. Um, also from the, uh, is the brainchild of a, a gentleman called um, Dado Weigart, um, who was a German, German cinematographer. Uh, he dabbled in a lot of high speed stuff and um, we've got some some of his products here. It's kind of the fourth or fifth incarnation of his DLH4 lamp, which used two lenses uh, together, which are not Fresnel. They're actually spherical cut glass. And um, what they do is produce a great deal of output from a very small amount of um, tungsten, or originally what it was, tungsten energy. And um, and they do this just by just focusing the beams. And what they get from that is a very even beam and also a very controllable beam. And by using, you know, say what 150 watts in a bulb uh, would be from a regular Fresnel, you'd, you'd, you'd be, you know, expecting about 300 watts. So you're getting the equivalent of 300 watts from 150 watts. So they're doubling, effectively doubling the output and making it very controllable. So I'll be talking more about that. Um, and then Photoflex is another stills, ma stills manufacturer that make a really lovely soft box that's lighting me here. It's very, very even, the light coming out of it. Um, you can either have a 500 watt or a 1K bulb um, in that, and they've actually, it, the starlight lamp protrudes into the center, the optical center of the soft box, and then expands around the soft box and, and creates a very even output. And then you just slap a, um, obviously a front face diffuser on the on the on the octodome and you get a really pleasing light um and they it's really efficient because the the actual head 
draws a lot of the heat off. What you find with lamps that are like 1K or 500 watts is they get very, very hot and very temperamental. And if somebody in the studio or wherever you're shooting might kick a stand, they can easily pop. Um, and that causes a lot of problems, obviously, to production. And these draw the heat off and make them a lot more stable. So that's a major benefit. Um, so I'll be, I'll be using these a little bit more and, um, and talking to you about them. But what I'm going to do now is also talk briefly um, before we get our model in to actually light, because that's what we're going to be doing. I'll just look at a little bit on, uh, about um, how we would light for green screen specifically. So I'm going to shut this off and turn on a di more directional light. And then let's look at some... I think we're going to need a, a camera in here um, to look at what we've got. What we've got. Here he comes. Here he goes, the guy with the camera. <coughs> what we have here, again, is the classic Keen Flow system. So very, very lightweight material. And the reason it's, it's lightweight is uh, it's designed to be rigged into sets, onto ceilings, onto scaffolding um, with minimal weight. So it's actually a quite... It doesn't look like much, but it's actually a genius design. And to keep weight down. And what they become used for, because they're using very, very soft, large tubes, is they're starting to be used for green screen a lot. And if you look on, I mean, some of the production stills for stuff sh that's been shot recently, like Godzilla or any of that kind of stuff, it's all been um, shot with green screen with Keenflow products. And you, you, you know, you can just look at the stills, you'll see them in the background. So I'm just going to, what I've got here, I don't know if you can see that, Matt, but this is just a power supply, a uh, very famous classic power supply for Keenflow. Um, simple, just control it, flick two tubes on. Same on the other side. Let's get down to this one, flick this on. And what you've got, as I prepared earlier, is uh, two four-foot double systems. I'm going to come out of your way so you can see. Um, what they do is light very evenly. And that's absolutely crucial for green screen. If you don't have an evenly lit green screen, I know you can't really see, you probably won't be able to see on the camera. But if you put a hard source onto that, uh, in fact, I might even try it and try and light it, um, you won't get quite the output, quite the, quite the same effect. This is actually probably a wrong product to do it with because it's a dado and they're very even anyway. So, um, But what you want is a large, soft, broad source. And that one, you're just not going to get the spread on it. So that's just a little introduction to green screen. Um, <clears throat> there are many, many ways to light green screens. but. Keenflow is a tried and tested system, and it's used professionally worldwide in features, um, in commercials, and all sorts. And that's that's sort of if it's if it's if it ain't broke, you know, it's nice to stick with it. Anyway, that's sort of a brief overview of that. Um, feel free to interrupt Matt or anyone if you've got any further questions on sort of what I've been doing here. But if not, um, Natalie, do you want to come in, and uh, we'll sit in and start lighting. Thank you very much for offering to do this because it's going to be really dull. Cool. We still might. Okay, so here we are now getting ready to set up what will be a three-point lighting um, set up, but we we're actually going to do a few more lights and I'm going to explain what, what the lights are for as I go through. Um, so, I'm going to kill our little fill light. We've gone a little bit to darkness here. And what I'm going to use now is, is a Kinefly Diva light, which has 455 watt fluorescent tubes in. Um, you can get them in many colors. Uh, they can either be tungsten or daylight. Those are the most common ones. So. 3200 Kelvin or 5500 Kelvin for daylight. So I'm going to just flash this now. So you just mind your eyes if you're going to stick over, look over at the speaker. All right. And um, it'd be good to see what we're we're doing with this one. So no chance we can. Yeah, thank you, Tom. That's cool. And we'll have to move our camera into position so we can frame up our shot properly. That's cool. All right, we're good. Thanks, Tom. That's great. So, what lighting is extremely subjective. So you don't have to um, you don't have to ed you know he heed these rules at all. You can you can do whatever you want. But what you will find generally in sort of the industry is you'll get somebody getting a key light, which will naturally be your sun, 
Um, and what you'll try and do here is create a triangle of light by using no shadow underneath the left or right eye, depending on where your key light is. And we've kind of achieved that. If you can see Natalie's face, you have this you know, triangle of light here. Um, and that's already kind of not a bad image. And if you, go, if, if you want to go back to where that came from, that actually came from the painter Rembrandt. And he always used, obviously painted his subjects underneath a particular window every time at a, p a particular time of day where the sun would create that shadow, that no shadow. And it's quite a pleasing um, image, and generally we just sort of like to that. But like I say, you know, <laughs> nothing's, um, it's all subjective. You don't have to do any of this. Um, but it's a good starting point. And what we need now is a, a fill light. Thanks, Tom. Um, so we've got, we've got our key. Natalie's quite well lit on the right-hand side of her face. Um, but sh it's a little bit dramatic, which is fine, depending on what you want to achieve. But if you want a well-balanced shot, you're going to need to bring a little bit of light um, from, t from the left-hand side. So you need something just as soft, but a bit more controllable. I've chosen to use another Kinoflow product, um, which is new. And the reason I've chosen it is because we, we've got not that much control light coming out of the Diva, and it's quite a lot of, quite a lot of output, which I might try and control later. But if you can see, I'm just adding in a bit more light just to bring in some detail on the left-hand side of Natalie's face. And I think that's all we need. You don't want to overpower the key light. You want it to, to be there to, so you know you've got a light source. And I'm just tinkering with that a little bit. Um, and I'm quite happy with that at that point. And just to give you an example, um, the celeb obviously goes from 0 to 100%. And the readout dial, Matt, you wanna, might, might want to have a look at the back of that. Um, you're only on 6%, if you can see that on the back of the celeb. So that's obviously 6% out of 100, and you're still getting quite a lot of output. And what I'll do, if we go back to our main image, is just turn tune it up, and um, you can see actually how much. It'll be overpowering, I think. Uh, so that's 100%. And then and you can see that you know Natalie's hair there is going to be burning out. So we'll just drop that back to 6. And there we go. Um, so yeah, so you know you've got your key and your fill, and that's not bad. But what, what you want as well is, is something coming from the back, especially if you're doing green screen. We're not at the moment, but the important thing with green screen is to bring out your subject to make them 3D. Um, and pe a lot of people don't bother with this. Sometimes it's because of time. Other times it's because it's not particularly necessary, but I think it really makes a difference to the image. Um, so I'm just going to tune this up. So we've got a, a Dado 20-watt um, LED at the moment, and these are brand new. And let's just, I'll just tune this up and try and get Natalie's head into the optical center of this. So I'll just be looking at her, the shadow of her head, so I know where it's going to be falling. That's, that's too much output on, on her head there. I mean, it could, again, it's subjective. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly like this, but I think that what you've got going on here is just is too much. And it's going to detract your eye from the image a bit. It's going to make you focus on things you don't necessarily want to focus on. So you really want this to be quite subtle. So I'm going to flood it out a bit. Again, that's too much, but hopefully I'm going to have enough control on this demo to just get a hint of light. So at that point, the light's off, and now it's back. I think that's that's all right. That's something. And that I'll just bring... bring Natalie out from the background a bit. So now at the moment we're at a three-point lighting setup, which in most cases is, is enough. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes you think, well, if you look at the background behind Natalie, that's pretty dull. And um, if you're being a perfectionist, if you've got the time, you think, well, I'd, I'd want to do something with that. <coughs> so what you can actually do, do you want to comment on this one a bit, Matt? Thanks, mate. Um, you've got a, these are brand new from Dado. Um, again, all this equipment is available from Scan. That's you know why I'm bringing all these up, but it's, um, it's important to know, but also what they are. This is an LED lamp. Um, it's 40 watts. It's using the Dado Optic. Um, the great thing about this lamp is that 
it doesn't need any active cooling. It doesn't need, you know, obviously Scan are very, very well versed in computers and all the components that go in computers and some of them are power hungry and, and produce a lot of heat. And to deal with that heat you need a fan, often enough. And obviously if your fan goes or your heat sink's not good enough then your product will, will die as well. It's the same thing with LEDs. LEDs do produce heat. Um, this is not, it's not a common misconception but it is something that people seem to overlook. Um, the heat doesn't come out the front, but it does come out the back, just like a computer chip or anything like that. Um, and it's really important to control that heat because if you don't control it, you will lose your color fidelity and also eventually your, your, um, the chip will die. Um, but really, when you're dealing with color critical environments like film, TV, broadcast, commercials, whatever, um, if you've got something you're trying to, obviously you're working with within parameters, you're working normally with 3.2 Kelvin or 5.5 daylight. And if those start shifting in a direction, you'll start getting very odd color hues, especially on skin. So it's really, really important to get those right. And Dado, luckily, are very have incredibly efficient optics, which mean they don't need to pump lots of power through a chip to get a lot of light output because they've already got an efficient optic, which means that they're not going to get hot enough to require a fan. So in this size, all you need it's just a heat sink, and that draws off enough heat. And the tho thermodynamics are enough to, to keep it cool. And we also found out these things are waterproof, um, which is pretty ridiculous. But I need to say that don't um, start, if you're buying these or you've got them, don't start throwing them in buckets of water. Um, they don't, don't recommend it. Or if you do end up getting them wet, please don't, don't put the power supply in as well, because that would be game over for lots of things. Right, anyway, let's turn this on and see what we got. So. Sorry, Nathan, yeah, that's a bit harsh. So we now got a big um, spot in the background. Can we, Tom, can you whack up the um, black magic image again, please? So we've got the, the. that's it, thank you, mate. Oh, wow, nice wipe. And uh, we've got now a load of <laughs> light on the background. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> um, so you can do lots of things with this. And the great, as I mentioned earlier, with dados, what's great about them is that uh, you can kind of shape them and control them. Um, and actually, I've got there's a few people who are kind of quite familiar with them, um, who we might be able to get on. I don't know. We're going to luck getting hold of Mark. Yeah, should we j try and get a hold should of Mark? Give him a bell because it would be quite a good yeah. thing for him to come in on while I'm doing this. But yeah, so what, what I've just done here is thrown a little bit of light across the background, um, which kind of, if you if you look at the background now, you know, I don't know, it, it's again, it's subjective. It adds something. You can do all sorts of sort of weird effects. You can kind of, you know, make it look like there's light coming out of Natalie's head or... <laughs> You can throw a slash di diagonally across the screen for whatever reason, um, you know. But w you can do many things. Oh, we've got Mark. Yes, we got Mark. Uh, Mark, can you hear me? Yes, I can, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, very good, thanks, mate. Where are you? Are you on the M1? M40. Oh, a oh, wow, you're doing all right. Um, Coming down from the Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. I can hear you. Okay, dude. All right, well, um, I'm just halfway through this webcast. Um, sorry, webinar, sorry. And um, we, we're just currently looking at some dados. Um, and I just thought it'd be good to... Can you hear me, eh? Can you hear me? I can, yeah. Cool. And I just thought it'd be nice to get your input on... Because I know you've, you've, done, you've done a lot of shooting. Um, and a lot of, you have a lot of experience using dado and Kino products. But I just thought maybe you might um, have some input on just how how you use them and talk about the versatility of of dados. Of da dado, yeah, DLH4s. Oh, DLH4s. For me, there's always a set at the back of my back. I was using them today. I've been doing a, a shoot in um, Leeds, and I was using them today. I was Yeah. So, but um. For me, I would do something like a a key, a soft sort of key, key light would be something like a Kino Vivo four hundred or a Expo LED. And then the the other side, I would use a Kino Vivo four hundred or 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 a Kino Vivo four h
sorry, Mark, we missed we missed the beginning of that, but I think we kind of caught the the gist of you using DLH4s as just part of your standard kit. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's really. I just want to talk to you really about how you, how you use them to control as control. I mean, as backlights and things like that, and what. How I use them? Sorry, what? For con, you know, in the controllability of of da data lights. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, that's why I, that's why I use them so much. To do it. It is the control that you get with them. Um, you know, the point is, is that a lot of other lights, especially for want to want to put a backlight in, but you don't want to catch the lens. If you know what I mean, you don't want to put any flare down the lens. Uh, so the idea is, you know, you put a backlight in, but you end up you need to control that light um, so that you can cut it beautifully. So it just shoots all sorts of lens, so therefore you're not giving yourself flare to deal with. Is that? Can you hear that? Yeah. Little bits of it, yeah. <laughs> and, and then if you're um, if you're trying to, um, you know, if you've got something in the background, just recently I was doing some stuff for Disney, where we had some of their uh, posters in the background of shots, and I had to pick out those posters, and I was using DLH4s to pick out those posters, you know, with the barn doors and also with the plumbing spot on those lights. You, yeah. You've got a lot of control. And lighting is all about, as you know, Ben, it's lighting is all about control. And that's why our cameramen sometimes are a bit control freak issues, but we, we have to control the light, you know? Yeah, exactly right. Sorry. You've just actually made me think of something, Mark, actually. You kind of cued me up when you said lighting posters and things yeah. like that. So I've currently got a DLH, sorry, a, a Dado um, DLED 4.1 and a DP2. I've got a, a DLH4, sorry, a D, DLED 4.1 and a DP2 projection attachment. And, um, I didn't get the last bit. Yeah, I've, I've put a DP, a dado projection attachment too. So one with the f internal framing shutters. Oh, lovely. I love those dado projectors. So I'm trying to demonstrate what you just explained, like picking out detail and posters and things like that. But how much... Yeah, no, absolutely. Those dado projectors are absolutely fantastic. I'll tell you what I do like. I don't need, do you have those, um, the, the, the ice one? You know, the way you can... Um, Oh, the data what are they called? The what the iset or the iris? Yeah, the i the iset. What to soften it? Yeah. I don't I have one with me. Lovely. <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. I think I think there's a bit of a story that they you I don't know whether it was designed for it, but I'm pretty sure they used it on that kind of iconic shot on Home Alone. Uh where um, Macaulay um, Culkin Home Alone. Home Alone. Okay. Um, where they got Macaulay Culkin to look through the letterbox, I think when he was trying to when I, th I think the guys oh, were trying okay. to break in, and they used yeah, yeah. The, the DP2 to project onto his eyes, but then it needed to be soft, so they used the DPI set to actually soften the edges of the projection. Yeah, yeah that kind of absolutely. Well, that does make a lot of sense. I, I, mean, I think it's a lovely thing. If you put in a, a quite a hard side um, key light, then yeah. you can actually use that as a, as a, you know, I'm using something else as a key, but then you can use that as a really nice fill to make that second eye. Yeah. You know? I think they're absolutely fantastic. I really do. And, um, do and have you got the projection in it, have you? Uh, what, the projection attachment, sorry? Yeah. You've yeah, got yeah. the projection attachment on there. I'm coming. Yeah, I'm going to come to that. I've got a DP2 ready, which, which I've been using, but I am going to come to a DP1. And show uh, show what yeah. you can do with that. If you want to talk about that for a bit, you want to talk about a DP one. I'm sorry. Did you want to talk about a DP one? What you can do yeah, with them? No, I, I think that's what I, I, I don't know the exact name, but the, the numbers. Sorry. The, it's the, the it's the it's the Gobo projector. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. We've got, I've got one of those. We use I've used those quite a bit actually. But they're very good for when you're in a um, a very plain office room or something like that. And you need to make it look a lot better. You know, you can really project something onto the back wall. And you know, if you, the best trick is to project the thing out of focus. Yeah. Because then it acts, it makes the, the background fade away more, or gives the impression that you, it does. You know. Yeah, I'm going to try and demonstrate that, Mark. We're 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 struggling to hear you, mate. I think um I think we we'll let you, we'll let you continue your drive down. Um, but okay, we, no we, worries. we sorry. definitely caught sorry no about that. no sorry we definitely caught some of it and it's good to, to at least have you in. Um, maybe we can do more of these in the future and you can have more, more input on it. But but definitely we caught some of that and appreciate that, mate. No worries at all. All the best, mate. You too. Drive safe. Yeah, See, speak to you soon. Cheers, Mark. See you. Bye. Bye. All right. 
Well, it was nice. It was nice to hear Mark sort of, but um, but yeah, obviously it sort of uh, doesn't bode well driving back to London, um, definitely on the A40. But what that brings me to is, is to talk a little bit about what Mark was saying, certainly the controllability and what I was going to demonstrate earlier. Um, so what I've got here is a, you can get all sorts of, this is called a gobo. And what it does is project images onto the background. Um, so you can get custom shapes or things like that, um, just to change up the background a little bit. Um, and you put it into a gobo holder. And that gobo holder will go into a projector, <laughs> which will go onto the lamp. Um, so let's do this. So you put it where the barn doors would normally go. And there's a spring-loaded holder here. Turn the lamp on, and what you should see, if you have a look at our main image again, please, Tom. Just for a sec. Let's rejig the camera a bit. There you go. You've got something coming onto the background there that's a little bit more interesting than what we had before. Um, you can change this around, but my issue with that right now is it's not particularly... Uh, I'll just move this out of the way a little bit. It's not particularly clear, and part of the reason for that is we've got a lot of spill onto the background from our key lights. Um, and this is an interesting thing that I learned from a chap called Jonathan Harrison, who does a lot of lighting seminars very similar to these, is um, you can actually control soft light. Um, soft light is obviously de designed to be soft, it's designed to be flattering, but what you have to control it is these honeycomb grids. And when you look at them, you kind of think, like, what, what is that going to do to a lamp? Really, it's just going to make it have lots of little mini circles in it. At least that's what I, think, I thought initially. Um, but what it actually does is stop the spill. It directs the light, um, almost as if you're putting flags up on barn doors, and things like that. It cuts the light a little bit. But if we watch the background a little bit more on our main image, um, you'll start to see, especially with this lamp, You'll start to see the background come out. I'll put it on the right way around, might work. And these are called honeycombs or louvres. And I think, if we go back to our image, we've got a lot more control on that. Um, some of the light has. Let's get out my own light there. Let's rejig it. So what you've got, you've still got your image and your, your, your subject is still lit. We've still got our, our triangle of light in Natalie's face. I'll just increase that a little bit. Um, and you're still, yeah, you're still getting what, you, what you're ideally looking for. But now you can control your background a bit more and throw different colors on it. The other thing you can do with this kind of stuff is gel it. So say so you don't want, you know, a daylight balanced background, you can just throw a gel over and make it green or and these are all cut to sort of sizes for dados so they can go inside but the the great thing about the LEDs now as much as the the original tungsten units which are still really popular um they get very very hot when you have these units on them and often enough when you're trying to change these gobos out they're really really hot and they're really fiddly almost too fiddly to use gloves so as much as we just dealt with it and got used to it at the time and like just sort of burning your fingers, now with LED, because the heat is coming off the back of the unit, there's not much coming out the front, so you just can pick them out and change them willy-nilly, and it's just really, really useful. Um, and that's something I hadn't really anticipated when the LED technology kind of arrived. So where are we at? We've got our key light, our fill light, we've got our backlight, and we've got a background lamp as well. Um, we can add one more light in. Um, that I learned about from Jonathan as well. This is a kicker, uh, or known as a kicker, and it just adds a little, uh, just another dimension of light onto your subject, and can make it very interesting. So what it's doing is kind of lighting the side, Natalie, sort of side of her hair. Sometimes that can, you know, you can light the neck and things like that if it's, it's there, but it just adds a bit more of an interesting image. Um, and that's sort of the, the extra one. And what I've got there is actually a Diva 200 with two 55-watt lamps in it. And each one, one is tungsten, one's daylight. 
just to add a little bit of a color mix. Again, it's very, very subjective. You don't have to do that at all, but it's nice to add it in and um, sort of round off your image a bit more. And that's pretty much where we are, five-point lighting. Um, what I might actually do very quickly, if there are any, unless there are any questions yet, no questions yet? Okay, hopefully I'm answering something. Um, what I'll do now is, is turn off the Diva 400, take this out completely. Um, do, I'll not take it out completely, just move it. And we'll use Photoflex Starlight that we were talking about earlier. Oh, that's going to cause me a problem. Let's lose this. All right. Good thing about Diva lights is they're really hard wearing, and you can just dump them on the floor. I mean, you want to try and look after your lighting equipment, but they're really um, they're they're in rental houses all over the world, and the reason for that is they they last really well because the materials they're made from, um, and that's a, a good thing about Kinaflow. Okay, Natalie, I'm gonna I'm gonna spark this one. It's gonna be a bit bright. Just mind your eyes for a second. Okay, all right. I reckon. We should be pretty ex overexposed on that image right now, if we just have a quick look at it. Yeah, it's kind of burnt out, so let's go in and just drop it down a little bit. There we go. And we're pretty still, I think we've got a lot of bounce actually as well from the other unit, but that's probably, uh, you need to kind of compare it, if you're watching the um, the the YouTube version of this, the actual stored file, not live version that we're doing now, you might be able to flick back and see how, how much softer this lamp will be because it's three foot in diameter, extremely soft. If you just have a look at this, Matt, for a sec. You've got, um, this is actually a 500 watt lamp in there, uh, but you can get a 1K, and normally you put in a 1K, but because sensors these days are so fast, you just don't need to do that anymore. Um, unless you're outdoors and things like that. The only downside of this lamp um, is the fact that if you want to use it in exterior locations such as offices that have like a lot of day, I'm going to turn this off now, a lot of daylight coming through, then you are going to very find it very difficult to, to compete with daylight um, because you would have to gel it and because of its shape, it's quite an awkward shape. So I do often recommend for people who are going into sort of scenarios where they don't know exactly what kind of uh, issues they're going to be facing when people say oh yeah there's loads of control you know there's there's a there's a blind and you're not going to have ton you know loads of daylight streaming in and they go in and there is then with the diva light at least you can change the tube switch into daylight and actually compete with you know with nature um so just adjust the image a bit yeah and so you you want to adjust that image um, so that you won't get Matt's glass back. Just saying that once, just for fun. Um, and um, and that's a really crucial thing for corporate shoots and things like that. Knowing what environment you're going to go into, but having a tool that will let you adapt to the environment, adapt to loads and loads of daylight. As much as it sounds like it, you want it as your friend, sometimes it's not what you want when you only have a tungsten lighting setup, and then you've got this weird sort of spill of daylight. Um, so that's that's quite important as well. Uh, where are we? How are we, how are we getting on? Thanks, mate. I'd actually like to point out at this point that the Octodome, although some of the other fantastic lights that you've been using, I've been quite envious with, and uh, as a, a amateur w uh, watching this, um, are a little bit out of my range because they are top professional products. Now, the Octodome's not on that same um, level, even though you get a really good quality output, it's much more um, affordable, isn't it? With yeah, no, different it, range. It, the, 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 no, thanks for bringing that up, Tom. Yeah, I mean, the, the really good thing about the Octodome is it's, as I was saying before, it's, it's a really solid product. Um, there isn't really anything else like it because the way it's conveniently designed. Um, and yeah, and I think it like, I'm not very good with prices, but really it lists about 450 pounds retail. So um, I don't know what Scan is doing it for, but our special offers. Oh, yes, the special offers. Our special offers. Yeah, um, <laughs> of course, the special offers for everyone who's watching this webcast, 
Um, if you're watching it now, or you're watching it live, or you're which, watching it within the two weeks, the first two weeks of June, then if you send us a email to webinar at scan.co.uk with the code word, then uh, we will send you back some very special offers that we can't possibly print. So, what's the code what's word? What's the code word, though? What's the code and word? what is Wait, it? What up? What, Natalie, code word. Eggs. Eggs. You need to send us eggs to webinar at scan.co.uk and we will send you back offers that we can't possibly print anywhere. Yeah. So, uh, plug over. Um, All right, that was, that was really subtle. Um, <laughs> thanks for that. Um, yeah, no, going back to the starlight, actually, um, it, is, it is a really, you know, I don't want to say, say, like, go for products over this. It's, it's an excellent product. And the thing is, it comes with a, in a kit, which makes life very easy because you don't have to go, well, what stand goes with that and that kind of thing. So it comes in a bag with the head, with the octodome, and a stand, and a bag. And, um, but the important thing is, it, which doesn't come in the kit, you should get a grid to control the soft light so that you can do what we were showing earlier um, and stop spill. And, you know, and st so you can effectively, if you want to, have a completely dark background so you can project onto it. Or if you've got this, and what often happens, you go into certain scenarios, you get a really horrible backdrop and you just can't help it. And you think, oh, I don't have time to move that. I can't change the angle because there's nowhere else to go. You can then stop the spill and stop that actual backdrop tr showing up and exposing. Um, so that's really crucial. And Photoflex makes some really nice soft boxes, um, and they're really uh, they make their own soft boxes. They stitch them themselves, which makes them very cost effective. And also they make their own grids, um, and which aren't the cheapest um, because grids ch aren't cheap anywhere. But they are such a useful tool, and I do recommend if you look into that, then then get one. There is an option, however, if you say like the daylight scenario that I was talking about earlier, you can get a compact fluorescent bulb, um, which is about the equivalent of 150 watts. Oh, it's 150. I think it's about 300 watts, something like that equivalent, and it will be a daylight output. Um, but I think it, in all truth, it's always better to stick to tungsten because you know what color space you're working with. It's a very proven color temperature. Uh, color rendition is excellent. We're in this world now, we've got all these different sources. We've got fluorescent, we've got tungsten, we've got HMI, which is obviously quite high end, but excellent color for daylight. Then you also have um, LED, remote phosphor LED, plasma, all this kind of stuff. But what's not being addressed with this kind of stuff is what is it doing to the image? What, what colors are you getting out of it? Um, you know, people think in some cases if you don't know, then illumination is enough, but it's not because you'll start getting from shot to shot, you'll get, start getting very odd color hues if you start using different lamps, and you can't, well, you can correct it, but it takes a lot of time and a lot of money. You need a, a good system, color grading, and sometimes you just don't have time. You don't want to be color grading things. You just want the image to be as you shot it or as you think you shot it. So you need to have confidence in what you're lighting with. And that does get overlooked. And I can't blame anyone who doesn't know for overlooking it, because how are you supposed to know? You know, you get a product, and it should say what color temperature it is. And you, you can only accept that. Um, but what they're not telling you is that, yeah, it might be hitting a certain color space. But what's actually in that? You've got all these spikes. When you actually look, to, look at it on a spectrometer, or especially a camera, with certain products, especially very, very low-end LEDs, you'll get very odd color hues on skin. And um, that's all down to what's in the phosphor that's coating the LEDs. You'll see a lot of LEDs that are daylight balanced because it's much easier to get a daylight color temperature out of LEDs because they're inherently blue. They're actually blue at source. It's like a UV color. So then you need to coat that um, to get your tungsten. That's why you get very few tungsten LEDs and very few good tungsten LEDs. And I've brought with me what I consider are two high-end um, bicolor um, LED panels. And the one from Kinoflow is extremely high end. Um, it's, it's priced at that point, it's, it, so it is expensive. But to be honest with you, it is, it is, you know, I'm going to be biased to say because I work directly with Kinoflow, but they just produce such a solid product um, that just is extremely intuitive and very, very easy. You know, it's so easy to use, loads of control, and lots of people. I mean, you're on at 0.6 of a percent. 
And people are going to say, well, what's the point of that? You know, how, how, when are you going to use that much output? But I don't know if you can see, but that's, that's lighting me. And camera chips are so fast at the moment, you, you need the control. You actually need it. Um, and it will show up, especially if you're lighting in a set, which is basically a cave, which happens a lot. And you can preset your own color temperatures. Um, and it's just really nice to use. And it's a Kinoflow product, so you know it's going to be... And the color is superb. It's very, very high-end TLCI rendering, which is what we're kind of using. That People are talking about CRI, which is called Color Rendering Index, which is what some manufacturers use to say what, what, where they're at in terms of the rendering of the color. It's not anything to do with the color temperature. It's to do with the color rendering. And, um, you know, it, we're not using that anymore because that actually is measured to the human eye. What you need to do is, is measure it really to a digital chip. And so there's now a couple of different uh, measurements out called TLCI and there's PRI as well in the, or, or something similar to that in the States. But it's very technical and not everyone needs to know about it. Um, people like me who, who are working closely with the products do need to know in case someone does ask. Um, but really, you just want the products to work for you. And that's the most important thing. So I'll go and have a quick look at this one, Matt. Actually, I might light it with the Celeb. Um, just turn it up. What am I doing now? I'm changing color temperature. Do I want to do it? So, there we go. So this, this is a product um, from Dado, but it's called Tech Pro. So it's Dado um, custom quality control product. Um, it's a panel, very similar to your regular. I'll spin it around so you can see what it's like under the softbox you've got uh, I think 556 or 36 um, LEDs in there um, and there's a mix between tungsten and daylight it's not nice to look at these when they're on when they're not got a nice bit of nice softbox on them um, because you will start seeing spots if you look away it's really quite unpleasant um, but they serve a purpose and they are really really handy and there's a lot of them around and a lot of them claim to be high color all this kind of stuff and S some of them aren't. So, what you want to do is just you want you want to know that you can trust the products, you can trust the color. Um, and this particular one, so it's a, a, a it's a Dado product with a Tech Pro badge, and it's called a Filoni. And this one's called Dado Color. And the Dado Color is actually the higher end of this range, and it's about the color rendition that's coming out of these LEDs. And this is designed to be at the moment, at a price point that's that's convenient, uh, the best color rendering we can get in the uh, in the actual panels um, at the moment, and this is this is the offering really that I think that people should be considering because it's producing an excellent light outfit. It's producing you need you need to really to to understand the color difference. You need to see it side by side with other other panels, um, but this is the issue that's not being addressed, in my opinion. And it needs to be because people are getting very, very old color hues, and it's crucial to get them right. And Dado is working really, really hard. Dado and Kinoflow, and a, you know, a handful of other manufacturers are also working really hard to to get good color out of LEDs. And it's not easy. Um, it's very technical, which I won't go into again, Matt. I'm sorry about that. My little rant. Ah, uh, it's done, mate. <laughs> um, but this is a really nice unit, and it, and it's at a decent price point. And I think you guys might be doing a deal on this one too. Yes, I think you are. Something right. like that. Um, you know, so, you know, Eggs. glass back. <laughs> 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 awesome. Why are we saying these words? So weird. Um, right, uh, well, I think we've, we've got one thing left here that we really haven't covered, and that's Mr. Den Lenny, who uh, oh, Den. Is, uh, is waiting on Skype for us. Is he? He is. All right, okay. Um, shall, we, uh, shall we see if we can uh, call him up, summon Lenny? Yeah, man, yeah, yeah. Lenny. use your pow magical powers. Mild superpowers. It's magical sounds. Hopefully, on the other end, if you want to just come in slightly towards the mic, the mic's on this Yes. Corner. Hello, mate. Hello, Den. It's Ben. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. I put my camera on for you. Oh, wow. It'd be nice to see you. Are we going to be... Oh, look, I can see him. Can we... And we're actually surrounded by uh, Kino floors. No way. Where are you, Den? I'm at the YouTube space in central London. So we've got Kino Flows behind me, Kino Flows up on the roof. We've got a Dado light 
back here. Um, so at this point, if Matt can come in. More uh, appropriate. Nice. What are you up to in Google? What are you doing there? Ow. Uh, I'm here <laughs> for Sony. Oh. We are just talking about the Alpha 7S. Oh, wow. So I don't know if that's relevant for tonight's chat, but uh, that's what we're doing here. So we've got a, a bunch of gear here, an F55 there. Oh, nice. We've got a full kilometer. So, yeah, we're just doing that. So I've been watching, I've been watching Ben. He's doing a great job. What do you, <laughs> what do you want me to do? Well, I, it, conveniently, we've worked on some stuff together, haven't we, Dan? Here, here and there. Uh, no. Oh, come on, mate. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I was thinking in particular where you might use some Kinefro products um, on like music videos, like a celeb, for instance, or something like that, where you might have used that, or a, or a Dado 400 or something. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, it's interesting, Ben, because uh, it's actually a celeb. Yeah. You might know about this. There's a celeb up in the top corner there, lighting me just here. Uh, we've got some uh, Image 45 just above me here. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm a big Kino Flow fan. Uh, I'm here at YouTube Studios tonight doing some stuff with uh, Sony. What I love about uh, you know, the Kino Flow products is just that lovely soft light. You know, we've got just this lovely, beautiful control of light. We made some music videos we did together. Uh, yes, we used, uh, I had to talk about the, um, the Octodomes. We used the five-foot Octodome on that music video with so Kelly Waters. That's a Dado product, isn't it, that one? The f that's the f it's a five-foot. Five foot. It's like it's like the starlight you've just been um, you've been just been demonstrating. Yeah. It's like it's like a much bigger version of that, uh, and it's beautiful on skin tones. Of course, as you probably explained, that the larger the light source, the larger the soft light source, the more wraparound the quality of the light can be. So if you're looking for a really soft source, that's terrific. Um, I'm a big fan of just the simple. You know, we've got a Tegra over here. And this actually this hasn't been set up this way. We didn't even know I was going to be here. <laughs> but we've got a Tegra here, I know. which is just just fabulous. Probably the most versatile light you can buy from Kinoflow. You know, I remember Frieder Holkheim telling me in, in America that you know, you, you 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 do it vertically, it becomes a harder light source. Put it horizontally, it becomes a softer light source. A truly versatile light. And you know, we talk a lot about low uh, power consumption lighting and energy efficient lighting. Well. You know, Kinoflow have been making energy efficient lighting for 22 years. Uh, energy efficient lighting started with the fluorescent tube and those particularly the, the high frequency tubes that Kinoflow used to maintain that color temperature. And I don't know if the, the people listening would, would realize this, but the amount of effort that Kinoflow and Frieda Holkheim went to, because Frieda was a gaffer, he was, he was a guy who was working on set, the amount of effort he went to, to find a manufacturer who would, who'd, who'd make the, the, the light tubes to his exact specification was phenomenal. And I think they're made in one place in the world because he has such a high standard. Mm -hmm. I heard you talking there about phosphors and spikes. And uh, they do everything they can to minimize what is what is inherent in a product. But for the most part, you never see it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's like what I was saying earlier, it's sort of important for for Frida to know and sort of people who work closely. And I mean, and of course, then as a DP, you, you know, you do need to know this stuff. But you got you want to just trust the products to work, but it's there's so much in the background that goes on to get them to work, and and Fried is just at the forefront of that. You know, I know he's doing all sorts at the moment. I'm not, I don't even know what he's doing. I'm not allowed to know, but it's you know it's great work. It's I think important. The thing that's worth mentioning about, and I think they will say they they will not bring a product to market until it's absolutely 100 percent ready. Yeah. Unlike some manufacturers who will rush a product to market and it's not quite ready and what you're actually getting is a beta version and they're working on that as you go. I mean, I, I remember seeing the Tegra in Frida Studio four years ago. I think it was four years ago. They were still testing it. And it wasn't quite right. And he said, oh, I'm not happy with it yet. And so, you know, the, the thing about lighting products, which I, I'm always amazed at how, how often people can be very confused by the investment in lighting technology. You know, I have a set of data lights which I bought 10 years ago. There's this... So I think when you're looking at, at lighting, the, the, the most important thing about buying high quality lighting is consistency. So when you turn it on in January and you have to go back and reshoot something in September, the quality of light is not going to change. You're not, you're not switching on a cheap fixture that's going to shift in color over time. And I've seen it myself with lower cost LED fixtures particularly. And you mentioned the CRI index. There's a number of manufacturers who really rely heavily on the CRI in it. Mm. And, um, you know, it's bullshit. It's, it's, it's not actually an accurate measurement of the color of the light. Because as you say, the, ca the camera you're using, the sensor you're using, 
has a massive impact on on the way that light is resolved. And the other thing which is really worth bearing in mind, and, I'm, and forgive me if you've mentioned this already, but uh, nowadays, you know, daylight-based lighting on electronic sensors is, is a perfect marriage to get maximum dynamic range out of the chips. And those new um, LEDs, the, the new LEDs, high-quality LEDs that Dado's created mm -hmm. are, are just fantastic for that. Incredible output using that wonderful lens technology that we're so familiar with that really focuses the light and gives you a very um, pure accurate light source for much lower power consumption so marry that up with, with daylight and I, I, my advice to anyone looking to buy lighting is is invest well in the right tools from the outset and they will last you for years yeah because we're talking when we're talking with cameras it's like you know that that technology is evolving so rapidly which is brilliant but it also does mean that you kind of need to move with the time so you are going to be changing your camera quite frequently but with lighting you don't really want to be doing that as well sorry tom was going to say something i think i think with this um, unfortunately our camera is um, about to uh, run out of battery here so i think we're gonna to have to uh, <laughs> we have to call it a bit of a night here Party pooper. But, um, Schoolboy error. Thank you very... Well, uh, <laughs> hey, I, we've I, all I been there, Dan. <laughs> we've all been there, mate. <laughs> um, yeah, so thank you very much for joining us, <clears throat> Dan. Um, it's Thanks, been an Dan. absolute pleasure. Um, and, and great to actually see um, all of the Cyrillite and the Kina Flow um, stuff <laughs> in action <laughs> where you are. Yeah. Um, Thanks. So and I'm coming live from YouTube, which is really quite ironic. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be on there as well. well th thanks a lot for that. Um, let's, um, if we can, uh, we'll go to some titles and then cut back, and we'll tell you about what else we've got going on. Thanks a lot. Dan. Thanks, Dan. See you, mate. Right. Bye bye. <laughs> Right, well, I think, as Tom said, that's all we got time for. Isn't that what people yes, say? Yes, I think, so. unfortunately, it is. But thank you very much for coming in and doing this. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, mate. It's been funny. It's been good. Um, yeah, no, no, really appreciate all the work you guys put into it, and it's um, good to sort of talk to people about it. So um, thanks for joining. And um, any questions? I think the video is going to be up online. Yeah, um, absolutely. So. Uh, and come and talk to us. And don't forget... Email the code word eggs. Was it eggs? It was eggs. It was eggs to webinar at scan.co.uk for Gosh, some that. special offers up until the second week of June. Um, otherwise, we're back in two weeks with Alphasphere, the brand new musical controller. Um, but thank you very much. Thanks to Matt. Thanks a lot to Natalie. And uh, we'll see you later. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks.